Elves are probably the most favorite army of us all. They are fast, they do good damage and their archers are by far the most powerful of the game. They do have very low armor though and therefore die very easily. Most of the times you will want to establish a safe defense near your fort and in the meanwhile you will just play with your heroes. Elves are kind of weak in offense though, it will be very rare to achieve an early game victory with them. Key point of Elven strategy is the 15 point magic skill, the Ents. With Ents and your heroes to provide cover, you can pretty much take down any fort. When the game begins, you must decide which hero you want to use, Legolas or Thranduil. Legolas costs 3000 and Thranduil 250. If you go with Legolas, make one farm with each of your builders. When the farms are done, make a barrack with one builder and another farm with the other one. If you choose Thranduil, you should start with one barrack and one farm. Next, two structures should be farms. First unit to choose from barracks should most of the times be Lorian archers. Second unit should be some swordmen to put some pressure on your opponent and try to destroy some of his farms. In rare occasions, say when your opponent is dwarves, you might want to start with two units of swordmen. When your first unit of archers come out of your barracks, put the next available builder to make a heroic statue near where you want to defend. Heroic statues provide armor and damage to the surrounding troops, and particularly the elven ones cost only 150, so it's a good idea to make plenty of them. I suggest one statue for every new unit of archer you make. Once you have around 5 farms and a decent army, a second barrack will be needed in order to produce army faster. Finally, an early tower might be needed if you are facing a constant spam of troops from your opponent. Don't forget to put a heroic statue underneath the tower to maximize your archer's damage that are in it. Also, the archers that you plan to place inside the tower can be set to aggressive stance in order to do more damage. Elven heroes are the fastest of the game. In the majority of the cases, you will be using either Legolas or Thranduil. Thranduil cannot be seen by your opponent, so he's probably the best choice if you can't handle your heroes very well. His first great power comes at level 7 though. Dead Eye can be used for killing enemy heroes or destroying buildings. His level 10 power, the Thorn of Vengeance, is the ultimate weapon for instantly killing enemy heroes. Legolas has better fire ratio and does greater damage than Thranduil. He's good for killing enemy troops. His Hawk Strike can be used against single units, battalions or enemy heroes with low health trying to run away. Try using it against concentrated armies and it will kill many of them with one hit, which will also provide a level up or two. At level 2 he gets the Knife Fighter, which is also amazing against concentrated enemy units. It can also be used against structures. His best ability comes at level 7, the Arrow Wind. You can pretty much kill entire armies using that skill. It can also be used to kill enemy heroes if inside the area of the skill there is only one opponent hero. Both elven heroes suffer from poor armor, so you don't want them facing big armies on their own. Since they, since they are fast, they can outrun any infantry unit, so the idea is to hit and run. Early in the game you want to get your hero in your opponent's base as fast as possible to kill his builders. This can be a major step back since they will have to wait and gather another 500 for a new builder. With Lego though, you might want to spare a few seconds to kill a monster from a lair in order to reach level 2 and get the knife fighter, which comes handy if you find yourself cornered by enemy troops. Elven Heroes is the best way to harass your opponent, so you need to keep them constantly on the move, killing units and builders. Since they are the best way to keep your opponent distracted, keeping them alive is crucial. They cost too much to get back and until you do, your base will be probably filled with enemy units. Moving some spearmen along with your hero might be needed if you are facing massive cavalry. Also, in late game, you will want to use some more heroes. In mid-game you want to have both Legolas and Thranduil, but in late game Elrod is also important. 
Elrod can provide a small heal for himself and the surrounding heroes with his level 1 Athela skill. You'll need to send him along with some spearmen and swarmen though to destroy enemy farms and level him up. At greater levels he provides leadership for your army and also at level 8 he gets the Whirlwind, which is probably the most fantastic power of all heroes. Whirlwind can be used both for defense and for offense. You need to know when to draw Elrod back though because it costs a lot to get back if you lose him. Last but not least you can use Glorfindel. Some people choose to start with Glorfindel instead of Legolas or Thranduil. He costs only 1500 and you can mount him on a horse from level 1 and send him to destroy enemy farms. Since he costs so little you can spare more money on troops and therefore rush your opponent. Glorfindel has the Blade of Purity at level 3, which is a great weapon for killing enemy troops faster, but most importantly destroying enemy buildings. At level 7 you can also use the Wind Rider, which increases his armor and speed. Use this skill if you want to keep him in a fight, say when you try to destroy an enemy barrack, or when you wish to draw him back fast without losing him. Finally, at level 10 he has the st Starlight which stands nearby enemy units and also provides your units with leadership. Elven Barracks can produce all infantry units available. Lorien Archers are the most powerful non-special archers of the game. They do good damage and have a quick fire radio. Early in the game you will definitely need a couple near your fort to protect your base. If however you see your opponent is spamming a lot of troops, you might need to get some more. Surprisingly though, the most useful unit you can get from your barracks are the Elven Swords. They are extremely fast and their damage is excellent. They are perfect for resource killing early in the game. They die very easily though, so don't use them for fighting. Just destroy as many buildings as you can with them. Since they are fast, they can outrun enemy units. If however your opponent has a lot, of, a lot of archers in his base, this strategy will not work. Elven swords are also impractical when your opponent is playing with cavalry. You can try using a mixed army of swordmen and spearmen. Swordmen to destroy enemy buildings and spearmen to protect your swordmen from cavalry. You are still vulnerable to archers though. Best tactic to use for offense is to push your defense. Elves are excellent in defense, so why not push your defense in front of your opponent's fort? If your hero is doing well inside your opponent's base, try sending the archers that you have near your base along with your hero. Then, you can also send a builder, make a heroic statue or two near your archers. After that, you need to make two barracks in order to produce troops right where you need them. Once your builder is done building your barracks, a tower might be needed to protect your archers and also to give them better range. From the moment you put your archers inside the tower, it will be extremely difficult for your opponent to destroy your little base. Finally, you can start producing some swordmen and attacking your opponent building. In the meanwhile, you can use your other builder to fill the rest of the map with farms, providing you with greater income. Keep in mind though that in games with multiple players, this strategy requires your teammate to also hold back your opponent's teammate. Otherwise, you may find your base facing an attack from another opponent and you will have no troops to defend it. Assuming you have established a safe defense around your fort, enemy infantry units will find it very hard to attack your base. Flying heroes will also be killed instantly by your archers inside your towers. So the best way for your opponent to attack will be with massive cavalry. In order to be able to defend against this tactic, you will need wall hubs all around your fort. Wall hubs are extremely strong in armor, so enemy troops will need to hit them for a very long time before destroying them and be able to hit your fort. The main entrance of your fortress, however, is unprotected. This is why you need a couple of spearmen there, set in porcupine, to not allow your opponent's cavalry to hit your fort. You will also need one unit of spearmen below each of your towers for better protection. The first fortress upgrade you want to make is the Blessed Mist. 
it only costs 1000 and with it you prevent your enemy from seeing where you keep your spearmen. This way his cavalry might run over some of your spearmen and therefore losing most of it. Still the elven fort is very vulnerable, so the second fort upgrade you are definitely going to need is the encasing pines. This upgrade is more expensive but it provides your fort with better armor. Also, the crystal mode will be needed to reduce the melee vulnerability of your fort. The enchanted anvil will also be needed before upgrading your army since it reduces their cost by 10%. If you have a large army that you want to upgrade, this will give you a great discount and therefore get back the 1500 you spent on this upgrade. The eagle's nest is a luxury and should be avoided since it costs you 2000 for the upgrade and another 2000 for the eagle, but he dies so easily and does so little damage that it's simply not worth the money spent. Most of the times when you are playing with elves you will find yourself having a strong defense but no offense at all. This is okay just because of the elven magic. The 15 point magic skill at the end is enough to take down your opponent's fort on its own. Just take your hero near his fort and use it. Put the ends on aggressive stance and attack his fort right away. Use your hero for killing enemy troops that will try to kill your ends. In late game however when your opponent will have a big upgraded army, this strategy will not work. This is why it's important to reach the end skill as fast as you can. The first three magic skills you should choose are the heal, then the elven wood and finally the summon offense. This way you ensure that you will use the ends as fast as you can and therefore not allow your opponent to prepare for such an attack. You can use the ends as a fast counter attack as well but you will also need the 5 point magic skill, the far side. Say you are facing an attack and your enemy has brought all his troops near your fort. Use far side first to see your opponent's base and then use the ends to attack his fort. Since most of his army will be in offense, his fortress will be defenseless. Far side can and should be used constantly to keep an eye on enemy movement. The other 5 point skill, heal, should be chosen right from the start, to ensure you will not use your hero early in the game. Elven wood is not so important, although you might need it to help your swordmen destroy some of your opponent's buildings. After heal and the ends, the most important elven magic is the cloud break. It's the best mechanism to help you in defense. When you see enemy cavalry approaching your base, you can use it to stun them while your archers are hitting them. Make sure they are near most of your towers to maximize the damage that you do. The Elven 25 point magic skill are not so strong for offense since they do little damage to your enemy's fort. But they can be used for defending, especially if you are facing massive, fully upgraded cavalry. Other than that, Enshrouding Mist can be used to cancel enemy leadership and Tombo Badil can also help your spearmen defend your base using his special ability, the Sonic Song. Key point of late game Elven strategy is the use of Merkut. Merkut are by far the best archers of the game, having greater range and damage than all other archers. They are still pretty weak though, so the best way to use them is inside towers. Merkut costs a lot though, the only way to deal with this is to have many heroic statues. Each heroic statue besides leadership provides you with 4% discount on troops, so when in late game you have plenty of statues, Merkut can even cost less than 500. Also, since elves have very strong archers, upgrading their weapons is also very important. Don't waste money trying to upgrade your blades or your armor go straight for Silverthorn. If you have 3 towers in your base with Merkut on aggressive stuns and Silverthorn arrows inside and heroic statues all around, your opponent will stand no chance attacking your base. Add all the defensive magic skills and a couple of leveled up heroes and your defense will be unmatched. 
At some point though, you will want to get the blades and armor upgrades as well for your spearmen. Having units that heal themselves is crucial. This can be achieved with the use of healing wells. This way you don't have to wait until your winning units reach level 2 in order to heal themselves nor you have to spend money on banner carrier upgrades. Healing wells cost only 300 and one is enough since you can send all units that require heal in that spot. In cases where you are facing strong defenses say when your opponent is man or elves himself, ends will be required to take down his defense. You simply cannot wait until the ends magic skill recharges. Also, if you have managed to corner your opponent, instead of recruiting many units from your barracks, you can simply make an end mood and produce a couple of ends. It will cost you the same money and since your ends will be protected by your tower, you will be able to hit his fort with no resistance. Finally, Elven Cavalry is the worst one of the game. They cost too much and they die so easily. But there are still cases where you can use them. If you see that you put no pressure at all to your opponent, a unit or two might be needed to destroy some of his farms. In all other cases, though, you should avoid using cavalry with elves. <laughs>